you doing ladies and gentlemen? This is Indeed Gaming here. I am in fact Mr. Indeed and welcome to my channel. Please do like, share, and comment on this video. And we're going to get right into it. Now, this video is going to be reviewing Gotham Knights. And um, I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. Um, luckily. I don't care about that. <laughs> my review is my review. Um, I see a lot of criticism of the game. I see a lot of people liking the game. It seems like people are pretty um, pretty split down the middle as a whole anyway, I should say. People are pretty sp split down the middle on it. Personally, I love the game. I think the game is great. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to break it down a little bit uh, in the sections. Um, most things that I do like about the game... There are still certain criticisms here and there that I have about them. So I'll try to go through the things that I like first and then go through the criticisms of them. And uh, we'll see where we land. So, starting out, uh, the way the game looks. Uh, graphically, the city, uh, I think all are amazing. I think, it, honestly, at this point, anybody who was saying that um, Arkham Knights looked better, stop it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> No, no, it doesn't. It did not look better. Um, and honestly, I even like the character models better. I like the way characters' faces are structured better. Honestly, I think all the characters in Gotham Knights in the Arkham series in general, or not Gotham Knights, in Arkham Knights in the Arkham series in general, all of them were ugly, including Bruce, Bruce Wayne. He looked like a weirdo. Honestly, I think the graphics on this game are way better. Um, I know a lot of people were saying that um, Arkham Knights looked better now that I've had a chance to play the game, then like actually like look at the characters and stuff like that for a decent amount of time, no, no, not even honestly, I would say not even close. Uh, the city itself, um, I think that this is the best Gotham City. Uh, mainly, I think the thing that sets it apart from Arkham Knights is uh, not to say the Arkham Knights had a bad city or anything like that. It's just that. Um, the city is actually a lot. There's more than just criminals in it. And there's actually a decent amount more people in the city than I think people thought. Now, obviously, the city's not jam-packed with uh, people, like like 100 people walking down like a 200-foot uh, span of sidewalk. I mean, because at the end of the day, it is nighttime. So, of course, there's not going to be too, too many people out. But I would say there's a decent amount of people outside um, not only that, I think that the uh, crimes in the city were d are done pretty well. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I've gotten the point. I've gotten um, what I always said that I wanted, where you run into random vi villains in the, you know, out in the city. But that being said, I would say that they still did the crimes in progress uh, pretty well. You run across random bank robberies, uh, random. Uh, people, like criminals trying to break out one of their um, one of their gang members, trying to kill witnesses, stuff like that. And then they even have like high value targets that you can find that I haven't had a chance to find any of them yet because um, I'm still working on you know getting my build up and everything like that. So I haven't um, I haven't really went looking for any of them yet. But they have like their um, high value targets of you know, characters from certain gangs that have names that are supposed to be much harder. So they kind of did what I wanted, but just not with an actual villain. But either way, I mean, I still like it. It looks like they put a lot more into making the city alive and feel different as much as they could without actually putting the villains in there. So I'm, I appreciate that. And I think the city itself as far as how it looks and as far as how it functions for the character is great. Um, moving on to the combat. Now the combat is going to be one of the things that I probably criticize the most of the game, but for now I will say the combat is actually a little better than I thought it was. Um, I think it could be a little bit more responsive here and there, but I would say that when the combat works, it, it works really well and it looks really good. Um, I think that um, maybe they need to speed certain things up, but for the most part, the combat actually works well. 
And I'm not going to get too much into the combat, like I said, because that's going to be where the most of my criticism is going to be at. And I feel like if I, if I talk about the combat for too long, I'm going to continue to go between the two. So I'm just going to leave it at right now. The combat for me, anyway, is a little bit better than I thought it was going to be. I, there's still, it still leaves some things to be desired. I would say this is probably the weakest part of the game. But, you know, that kind of is what it is. Moving forward, we're going into the story. Now, um, I, I actually think the story is really well. I mean, re done really well, I should say. And um, I think they've done the characters fairly well as well, um, at least for what they were going for. I mean, obviously, I have certain criticisms of how they did Jason or anything. But as far as what they were going for with the characters, I think they did well. It seems like the Gotham Knights in this game already have um, a fairly decent relationship and rapport with each other. It's not so much, um, like it doesn't look like we go into at all Jason, you know, used to killing people. Or used, when he showed up killing people, honestly, by the way that the game has been portrayed, at least from what I've seen so far, and to be fair, to be clear, I haven't actually beaten the game. I'm at the last mission, but I'm, I'm just grinding right now. <laughs> but as far as um, the, uh, I guess about 90% of the story, 80% of the story that I've went through, it doesn't even seem clear that Jason did come back from the Lazarus pit and, you know, come to Gotham and kill people and stuff like that. It hasn't really been acknowledged as a thing that happened. It does, you know, they do acknowledge Jason having um, a temper. Uh, there is a point where uh, him and Tim are talking and Tim thinks that maybe he's getting a little too, um, well, his uh, bullets may be a little bit too dangerous. But they never really go into him showing up and just killing people as the Red Hood before they knew who he was. It seems like maybe that didn't happen in this universe. And, um, I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, for what they're going for, like, sometimes I feel like I shouldn't, um, criticize things for what I think they should be. I should criticize them for what they actually are and what the person who made it was going for. So, for what they were going for, I actually have no criticisms of what they did with Jason. Um, all the Gotham Knights seem to already have, like I said, a pretty decent rapport with each other. It seems like the most tension will be between Jason and uh, Dick, which is typically the case. Um, Robin, well, Tim just doesn't really seem to have, he seems to be nervous around Jason quite a bit, so maybe they don't deal with each other that much. I would say the person that Jason seems to have the best rapport with is Barbara. Um, I don't really sense any tension between the two of them. They both seem to be pretty good friends, which makes sense, I think, because that's kind of Barbara's, um, Barbara's personality. I could see Tim trying to stay, stay away from him. Um, Dick and Jason just always kind of butt heads. And also, I would say that they made Tim a little bit younger than I thought that they made him. He seen, he definitely seems like the child of the group. Uh, he's still a teenager. I'm not sure if he's 18 or 17 or 16 or whatever. But I think they did a good job portraying him at that age. So for I would say for the characters themselves, what they were going for with the characters, I think they nailed it. Um, when it comes to the story as far as the court and League, I think that they also did a very good job with that as well. If I would uh, give one criticism of the way that they did the court, though, it is a little weird how they have the court out in the uh, open world. Like, the court is out in the open world and with owl masks on and stuff like that. It's like they they wouldn't be out like that openly. Like, in some of the times that I run into them on the street, like, they're, like, on the, like right on the sidewalk of a main street sitting there with their, their court of owl mask on. It's like they wouldn't actually do that, nor would they have people out there in suits with owl masks. But like I said, got to criticize it for what they went for, not for what it was. I don't know, not for what I think it should have been. So, again, for what they were going for, I think that they did a good job. Um, I'm actually thoroughly enjoying the story. This is one of those games where I kind of 
veer off from the story purposely just so I don't have to finish the game. And then I've also not done any of the um, the Clayface, the Dr. Freeze, or the Harley Quinn missions just so I have something to do after I've beaten the story mode. And then also I want to see what um, those fights are like when you're at max level because I am at max level now. My builds just aren't what I want them to be. Moving on to the criticisms, and um, I'll address some of the ones that I've heard before I get to my main criticism of the game. The uh, bike riding. People think that the bikes are too small. I mean, too short. Not short. Too slow. <laughs> People think the bikes are too slow. Um, I think there are points where the bikes feel like they should be faster. But I think as a whole, the reason that the bikes are at the speed that they are is because the streets are pretty tight. And it looks like they have the bikes at a perfect speed where you could be going at fit, uh, full speed and still like get around corners and maneuver well. I think that that was what they were going for. So if anything, I'm not really sure if I want them to speed the bikes up as a whole. I would say them adding like a boost to the bikes. So when you're on those straightaways, like going down a bridge or something like that, that you can really like fly down that thing because what, those are the points in the game anyway for me when you're on a straightaway for a long period of time where it feels slow. Like, I understand the speed of the bikes for what they were going for because like I said, I feel like I can go at full speed and take corners and drift around stuff and get around pretty well without running into stuff. I think that that was what they were going for. That being said, on those longer straightaways, I would like there to be like a boost button or something like that so that I can, you know, get across those bridges a little faster, get down whatever straightaway that I'm on for longer because I don't really think speed is 100% the object here. Like, we, people have to remember that when Gotham Knights, the streets were way wider. Like, they were infinitely wider. They were unnormally, abnormally, I should say, wide for the Bat Batmobile. These streets are a lot more realistic in size. And then also, you also have to keep in mind that in Gotham Knights, there weren't really cars driving around like that because like, the city was empty. So there, was a, there were different things that they had to deal with and they had to take into account. Uh, it would be a little uh, unimmersive if you were just riding around crashing into people and other cars the entire time. So I feel like they tried to make it um, as easy to maneuver as possible so things like that wouldn't happen and I understand and respect that personally. Um, another criticism that I've heard is the uh, tra transmog system not allowing you to um, edit. The, um, like the, you can't like change the cow, change the symbol and stuff like that if you tra transmog something. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Uh, criticism. I'm not really sure why they wouldn't put that in the game at start. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be patched in because I hear it's a, I mean, it's been a pretty big criticism, but yeah, I'm not, I don't really understand why they would let you transmog to the base of another suit, but not like edit it at all. Like if, if anything, like say you have the suit unlocked and you have it, um, and you have it transmogged, not transmog, I'm sorry, but you have that suit and you have it edited. If anything, they would be like, okay, well, whatever you have that version of the suit saved as will be what you transmog it to. That would make sense to me anyway. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not really sure why they wouldn't do that. And um, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe there is a way to do that. And I, I just haven't found it yet. No one else has found it, but um, yeah. As far as I can tell right now, that's just not a thing in the game. Being able to edit the transmog version of, an, of a suit, they should probably put that in the game because I'm, I'm not really sure why they didn't, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, and then to my uh, criticism of the game, my main criticism of the game, and I, I may actually make a separate video talking about this, is the combat. And there's a few different things that I that I take issue with on the combat, and I feel like I com I can, can um I feel like I can criticize the combat more because 
Certain other things are a little bit more subjective as far as what the developers were going for. So I feel like I should criticize them for what they were going for, not necessarily what I want, or a mixture of the two in other cases. This is one of the things where I feel like for what they wanted, I think it was just bad for the game as a whole. And I'll explain uh, why, but like I said, I'll probably make a separate video on it to go a little bit more in depth on it. But the short version is, is that in particular encounters in this game, you can very easily not feel very powerful. Not only can you not, you can e very easily not feel very powerful, but you can also feel um, like you're just dodging the entire time. And that's, that's one of the things that I think is an issue with games where they give you the only option is to dodge, is that after a while it feels like you're only dodging. Like, so when I first put the game on hard mode, well, no, this wasn't when I first put the game on hard mode, because I actually put the game on hard very early, and then I switched it back because it was stupid. <laughs> um, basically, I ran into um, a bunch of gun people and drone people. And these drones are the most annoying thing ever. <laughs> So basically, I got to a point where, I mean, it's not that I couldn't beat these people, but it just felt really dumb because I was doing nothing but dodging like every three seconds. Like I would hit one person two times and then I would have to dodge. And then I'd have to dodge and then I'd have to dodge again and then I'd have to dodge again. And then I would hit one person two times and I'd have, I'd have to do it again. Like, and that just seems stupid. To me like that's a that's a bad combat system to me now obviously there's certain things about that that could make sense but the problem with that is that like yeah if they all have guns realistically they'd be shooting at you quite a bit i get that it's like but they kind of make it so you have to deal with the fight in that way because you can't take you can't do silent takedowns of certain enemies so then I, I, it's not that I was like, okay, well, if I don't want to get into that position where, you know, I'm, I just have a million people trying to shoot at me while I'm trying to fight, I just have to do silent takedowns on certain enemies or silent takedowns on all of them. Okay, that's fine. The problem is, is that I can't silent take down the people with the drones. I can't silent take down them. Also, I can't even, I just can't take them down. Like I can't do a ambush takedown on them either. I only take away like 30% of their life. Now this, again, this could be just because um, my build isn't made that way. This could be because I wasn't playing with Tim. I was either playing with Red Hood or Nightwing, but I think everybody should be able to silent take down regular enemies. Like if you want to leave the silent takedowns to uh, on a uh, bigger people to um uh what's his name to tim because he's a stealth guy i guess i kind of get that even though that semi doesn't make sense because jason is the only one who can grab them so i don't know why he wouldn't be able to take them down as well but either way i feel like if that's where you wanted to leave it with the big guys fine like but when it comes to the other enemies that aren't like the big or more abnormal people it's like why can i not silent take them down I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. And it, if, like I said, it forces, my issue with it is that it forces you into a combat situation where you're dodging like every five seconds, well, less than five seconds in most cases, if I'm being honest. Now the encounters become a little bit easier when you have, um, like with those, with the uh, regulators, I believe they are. Yeah, the regulators. The encounters become a little bit easier when you have Thunder Element, but at the same time, it shouldn't have to take that, in my opinion. Like, I get that, um, and I think they, this is one thing that I also say, is that I feel like they did do a decent job in making the elements actually matter and making you actually feel like you need to prep for fighting um, cer certain um, factions. Like, if you're about to fight the regulators, using the, um, the thunder element works because if you hit the um, drone person, with the uh, thunder prop, then it'll kill all of her drones. Makes sense. So 
I, I do think, I do actually like that. But, one, it's a little bit easier to get that thunder proc with certain enemies versus others. Two, the drone people are just annoying as fuck. Because one, I can't silent take them down or ambush take them down. So it's not like I can be like, okay, well, I'm at least going to ambush take down this person. Everybody's going to see me. But going forward, I don't have to deal with like the infinite drones being being summoned. And they always get sewn two at a t uh, summoned two at a time that are going to shoot at you. And then one that's just going to come at you and try to blow up. Like, if I could at least do that that would be a little bit better but not only is it going to be three drones coming at me then also the drone person can dodge your attacks so if i'm shooting at her i, I could shoot her for a little bit but then after a while she's going to dodge my bullets which is a little ridiculous for all that heavy stuff that she has on her being a human and not being trained by batman but anyway <laughs> it's like so she's going to dodge my bullets or if I'm playing with somebody who's uh, like Nightwing, who's better at hand, uh, you know, close quarters combat, then she's gonna start dodging my attacks. She's gonna run away from me. And then I got other people trying to shoot me and other people try to punch me. And so then I can't get to her and then now I still have those drones trying to shoot me. Like, it makes the combat not fun because it becomes more of a dodging simulator versus me actually fighting people. And this is one of those things where it's like, do I, do I wish there was a counter system in the game still? Yes, definitely. Would a counter system make parts of this better? A little bit. <laughs> Maybe like 20% of it because I wouldn't be dodging so much. I would just be countering people. It's like, but I'd still have to dodge all this thing shooting at me. So honestly, that's why I said like 20%. It's not going to make it that much better. Like... They need, I would say that they probably need to at least let you silent take down all enemies except for the big ones. I should be able to silent take down everybody. I can't think of any reason that I can't silent take down somebody. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I think that that's probably one of the things that hurt the combat the most. And then one other thing, again, I think I said I'll make a video on the combat specifically where I actually like show the things that I'm talking about, but the the cops being able to block, it's like they can block, they can dodge, uh, they, they can do dodge, like little like dodge hits, like bas basically um, like the perfect dodge hits, they can basically do that. It's like, but then if you do a perfect dodge on them, they still block your perfect dodge attack sometimes. It's like, these people are just random cops with their, literally have their sleeves rolled up. And not only can they block and perfect dodge and all this other stuff, it's like, they can block my momentum abilities. That seems a little stupid, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so, um, those are some of my criticisms of the game. Like I said... I'm um I'm enjoying the game uh, as a whole. If I was to rate the game, I would probably give the game about an eight. And the combat would be the thing that drags it down the most. But like I said weeks ago, that's not really what I was looking forward to the most to enjoy the game. So that's my review on the game. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you share some of the criticisms of the game? And then also, oh, I probably should address the uh, FPS thing. I haven't noticed it. I haven't noticed it as an issue at all. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you guys uh, think of the game as a whole. Are you enjoying Gotham Knights? Have you beaten the story yet? Where are you at? Um, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Indeed.